My name is Reese Beeston, and the case study I'll be presenting today is for remediation of a landslide south of Sydney, New South Wales. The assessment work presented today has been completed in collaboration with Scott Morrison from SMEC and Ali Parsa from JK Geotechnics. The image here in this photo from 2017 provides an overview of the site. The grass field area below the road is known to the client as an active landslide, and the red circled area is indicating where the pavement is impacted from displacement by the landslide. The landslide has been known to the client for many decades. Uh, typically, the clients had to adopt a maintenance approach whereby the asphalt is topped up at the head scarp of the landslide to counteract any displacement. Uh, in recent years, the client has had to replace or repair the pavement every three years. The photo here in this image from 2017 shows the approximate location of observed tension cracks on site. And you can see the tension crack at the top of the site heading up through the pavement just past the center line. The objective of the geotechnical assessment was to assist the client identify potential remediation options and to see if there was a solution that they could implement at the site within their budget. To start the geotechnical assessment, we carried out a desktop review of the client's existing information. The client had over 30 years of, of existing geotechnical reports, lab testing, groundwater monitoring and inclinometer inclin monitoring at the site. Following the desktop review, we carried out a site inspection with detailed geotechnical mapping, survey, and consultation with any nearby residents that were familiar with the site. Using the information obtained from the geotechnical mapping, we then started to develop a subsurface model for the project. This section here is one of the critical sections, which I'll show on the next slide detailed in slope W that we identified on site. During our desktop review, one of the key items that we identified was that it appeared to be groundwater that was activating the mobilization of the landslide. With the review of the 2017 monitoring data, we identified that potentially once the groundwater really reached 2.5 meters from finish, that the landslide would likely remobilize. We were able to compare this to another event in mid-2017 where the groundwater reached 2.8 metres below ground level and no mobilisation was recorded. With reviewing the data, we considered that a rain event of 70 mils within 24 hour hours was likely resulting in the water level reaching 2.5 metres below surface level and reactivating the landslide. Due to the proximity of this site close to the coast, a 70 mil rain event was quite regular which is the likely cause of, of three yearly frequent resurfacing of the pavement. Using the data from site and the desktop review, we started to build our slope W model. We input the groundwater levels from site readings and from the information supplied by the client. We specified a failure plane using the inclinometer data that was available. And we also used some of our inputs from our site inspection on site for the head scarp at the top of the slope and the exit at the toe of the slope. The back analysis was set up to target a factor of safety of just below one. We were then able to determine residual soil strength parameters for the materials that were observed displacing in the landslide. Once we developed our back analysis, we were then able to start talking with the client about potential remediation solutions. One of the solutions that was proposed was dewatering the landslide using trench drains to stop the water reaching at 2.5 metres below ground level. To achieve this, we proposed four metre deep trench drains. To determine the spacing, we initially carried out an assessment at five, 10 and 15 metre spacings to see the potential effect of dewatering in the soil units at the site. One of the problems we briefly identified at this phase was that the dewatering was not occurring between the 10 and 15 metre space drains, and it was possible that trenches were going to have to be excavated at five metre spacing. Based on our experience and the client's experience, we also saw an issue with constructability with a four metre verti vertical trench drain and potential safety concern on site with the trenches collapsing and workers on foot. We then proposed that we could terrace the trench drains in the fashion shown in the bottom figure. The client also identified that there was a private lot at the site that was inaccessible to them. 
based on the outcome of the 2D analysis, we weren't overly confident that, that the trench drains were going to dewater the site sufficiently to keep the water below the 2.5 metre mark during significant rain events. We then explored with the client that if we were able to potentially demonstrate this in a 3D space, we could see dewatering occurring downslope progressively beyond the initial point of the trench drains. We took the information and we then started to build a Plaxus 3D model. We took the simple analysis, which just had the vertical drains at 5, 10 to 15 metres to see if we could simulate the potential for dewatering. We applied a positive pressure, which was indicated in red here in the plexus output, and then we could and we could see an outwards or a dewatering and reduction in pressure in the blue colours, with the darker blue indicating potential zero pressure, indicating likely full dewatering. The outcome of this initial assessment indicated that both the 10 and 15 metre drains at some point downslope would dewater the site. We then took the client specific information of adopting the terrace trench drains and the private lot, and we made the site more detailed. And we then re-ran the analysis. The analysis indicated that across the private lot, which was approximately 20 meters in width, that dewatering would occur at a distance of approximately 20 meters down slope. Using the Plaxus model, we were then able to start cutting slices through the slope to look at the groundwater level at specific locations. We we're able to cut a section at the crest of the slope as shown in section BB, which shows little to no dewatering between the drains. And then we could cut a further section at 10 metre intervals. This section E, e here shows a section cut at 20 metres downslope where full dewatering almost occurs between the terrace drains over the private lot in the middle of the site. Using the data obtained from the 3D analysis, we were then able to take this information and reapply it into our slope W model from the back analysis. We remodeled the groundwater level at the reduced levels as shown from the plexus, and, re and we were able to re-simulate the model with an increased factor of safety. The main objective for this was not to achieve a factor of safety typically expected in a geotechnical analysis, but was to reduce the frequency of required resurfacing of the pavement. Based on our analysis, we, we saw a 25 to 30% increase in the reduction of factor of safety, and we were somewhat confident that it was unlikely to see the landslide reactivate under the 70 mil over 24 hour rain, rain periods. The client then took our data and went back to the site. The client commenced with installation of the terrace trenches with three in the accessible lots, one miss for the private lot, and then the fourth one into the other accessible location. This work was completed in 2018, and we've now had over three years of data to ground truth this solution. Since 2018, there has been several events with over 70 mils of rain in 24 hours that have occurred. And we have even seen events with up to 200 mils of rain in a 24 to 48 hour, hour period. From discussion with the client, we are aware that no new stepping or cracking in the pavement has occurred since completion of the work 2018. The ability to transfer the 2D model into a 3D model allowed us to give confidence to the client that there was potential for dewatering across the trench drains. And this simulates that there is potential with 3D modeling to obtain better data than just a 2D interface. The ability to simulate this 3D model has enabled our client to have confidence of, of their, their selected solution to perform satisfactorily, which could now be seen occurring on site. Thanks.